comfortable now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, basically, we have a 2.7 liter twin cam 16 valve gasoline engine. It's come from Toyota, normally aspirated. Um, and when we got it, it didn't have enough punch for my dad, and we wanted some more grunt. <laughs> Uh, we decided the easiest thing was to, to do was to keep it a high compression engine and turbocharge, well, relatively high compression, turbocharge it with a small turbo and run relatively low boost on it. And um, there wasn't anything available, no one was doing anything for this engine or anything like that. Uh, so we kind of just did it all ourselves. Um, we were lucky enough to find out that this 2.7 engine comes in the T100 for the American market, so we could get a clutch from center force that would hold it all together and other than that we just kind of built it all ourselves and this is the end result 250 horsepower put down on an engine dyno and from let me see the turbo comes alive from about 1200 rpm so hang on to your seat belt what's the fuel injection that looks like uh that, that's just that's just uh, toyota that's standard yeah. toyota yeah. this is a standard toyota intake manifold um, from this engine in the States, or yeah, somewhere, yes. not in the States. But yes, yeah. But it's, it's, got, it's got a Pactel engine manual. Yeah, it, it, well. we're not running right. anything, the engine, because th originally this actually came with a carburetor on it. Right. And we got this manifold then from a, a different, well, same type of engine, different market. Right. It's just um, a later engine. Yeah. Right. But um, you're controlling it. Yeah, then yeah. We, we took complete control of it from an aftermarket ECU. Um, to adjust all the fuel in and boost, manage the boost and that type of thing. Um, and this is one of my first projects, so the welding and the bending is a bit rough compared to Chris's. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but I suppose you got to start somewhere. Yeah. What's the, what, what's the company the ECU made? Pectel. Pectel. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's a European. European. I was yeah. going to say it sounds yeah. European. Um, very, 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 very advanced ECU. I don't think there's anybody in the world other than Bosch that can match Pectel or Motec. Um, but I think Pectel is in front of Motec. Hmm. Um, very, very, very good at ECU. They make a, the same company makes a lot of stuff for Formula. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Very advanced. Um, we picked up the intercooler on one of our trips to Puerto Rico, stubbed it in our luggage and brought it back. I think it's an HKS Universal or something that we just fit on the front there and built this guard to protect it. And um, that's about it. But I, I think if it turned up, you both see with the ECC 300. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it would need a slightly e bigger turbo. Um, because when, when we did it initially, we had a heat exchanger. I think yeah, we had a word. water, we had a, a heat exchanger. Instead of having sure. air in water, 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 water yeah. after. Yeah, yeah. And water was, after cooling. And yeah. Terribly yeah. inefficient. Very, yeah. very bad. Yeah. It, it yeah. couldn't control the heat at all. And um, the, the EC was just dumping. Yeah, the EC would be tuned the engine to save it. You know? mm -hmm. So um, we never really um, went after the boost after that. Yeah. Since we've gone to this, this has been a lot. So we the, the engine could actually probably do with a retune, and we would probably get close to 300 hours. Yeah. It would probably destroy the gearbox, but uh, yeah. 250 is yeah, it's enough. That's yeah. enough. Yeah. 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 You struggle. You got what you wanted out of it. Yeah. yeah.